Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for the third instalment of Mystery Week. Today we're going to be covering the very strange disappearance of Corey McCaig. If you are from the UK then you've probably already heard of this because this has been a massive massive case over the past couple of years and I've had so many requests to cover it. So Corey McCaig was just 23 years old when he disappeared on the 24th of September 2016 from Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk. He'd grown up in Scotland with his mum and his two brothers. His parents got divorced but his mum Nicola and his dad Martin both are really desperate to find him. Corey joined the RAF in 2013 and he was posted down in Suffolk at the RAF Honington. On the night of 24th September 2016, he had the weekend off work, so he went out drinking in Barry St Edmunds with his friends. He was meant to be getting a lift there, but his lift fell through, everything kind of went wrong, so he decided to drive there himself and leave his car there overnight. Like, nothing was going to stop him going out that night. He just thought he'd pick up his car the next day. He had a very, very typical English night out, shall we say. He went to a bar where he met his friends, and then they moved on to a Weatherspoons, which is kind of like a rite of passage on an English night out, shall we say. After Weatherspoons, of course, they headed to a club called Flex. He's in the club for about half an hour with his friends when a bouncer approaches him, pats him on the shoulder and asks him to leave because he's very, very drunk. Um, now, I have personal issues with the fact that bouncers ask people to leave clubs. I, I know if you go to a club, you're over 18, meaning that you are obviously old enough to look after yourself, but... I personally have had many a fight with bouncers in Reading for asking friends to leave without telling anyone else or not letting people in, just letting like, especially teenage girls wander the streets drunk on their own. Um, so I just, it's not really relevant to the story I suppose, but I just have a massive problem with bouncers asking people to leave, like not even giving them a chance to go tell their friends where they're going. From what I can tell this bouncer just made Corey leave and so he left. He wanders to his favourite takeaway, Mamma Mia's Pizza and picks up a pizza and then is wandering the streets, kind of stumbling a little bit. He's definitely drunk in the CCTV but I don't think he's like really unable to function drunk. He's just stumbling around a little bit clutching his takeaway. And then he disappears into the shop doorway of what I think is an electrical store called Hedges. And he is in this doorway for like an hour. I'm assuming is where he sat, ate his takeaway, maybe fell asleep for a little bit. And then CCTV shows him walking out of the doorway and walking around. CCTV last shows him at 3.25 a.m. He's walking down a street called Brent Gravel Street and he disappears into what is known around there as the Horseshoe. So there's the road and facing onto the back of the road are a load of shop backs um, and it's kind of in a horseshoe shape. So Corey has walked into this horseshoe and there's no CCTV covering this area but it's a complete dead end. There's no way he can go from this horseshoe. It's just all shop backs. So he walks into this horseshoe and there's no footage on any of the cameras cameras that shows him ever leaving. From what I could gather there are about 10 cameras in the immediate vicinity but there are two cameras facing the entrance to this horseshoe um, but they don't actually show the horseshoe and they never show Corey leaving. His friend said that Corey wandering off when he's drunk wasn't a very strange thing to happen. There's always a wanderer in a group of friends, you know that friend you got a night out with and they just disappear. I think Corey was that person. They said it wasn't crazy of him to fall asleep in the doorway. They said that he'd fallen asleep on top of rubbish bags before. He was just not a liability on a night out, but he was definitely a wanderer. I think Corey's friends all assumed that he'd just gone back to base, gone home. It was only when he didn't turn up for work on Monday morning that the alarm was raised that nobody had actually heard from Corey in a couple of days now. Corey hadn't spoken to any family or friends at all and when they went into Corey's room they actually found his eight month old puppy in there and Corey hadn't been back all weekend. He hadn't tended to his puppy and from what his friends and family say he was like absolutely smitten in love with his puppy. There is no way he would have left it locked in a room by choice. He would have been there to let it out. So the police begin the search and obviously the first thing they do is look at CCTV from the area. And this is where they realise that Corey has walked into this horseshoe. So this is where they begin their search. Now this horseshoe, like I said, is a dead end. It's all shop backs. Um, there's like quite a few doors into the back of these shops. There's a staircase that sort of leads up to the roof. And there's a few cars parked there. And there's also biffer bins. Those big industrial bins with the flip top lids that businesses would basically throw their rubbish in. They came to the conclusion that in this horseshoe, there's nowhere that Corey could have gone. Unless one of the businesses had miraculously been open at three in the morning and somebody had opened one of the back doors and let Corey in, there was nowhere else he could go. 
apart from in the bins. Um, they speculated that Corey had climbed into one of the bins and fallen asleep. And then the bin lorry had come along, picked up the bin and emptied the rubbish along with Corey inside. Now, I personally find this a little bit... I, I just don't think this could happen. Like, these bins, we've got them where I work as well, and you can't really climb into them that easily. Like, I can imagine that they would tip forward. If I tried to climb up the top, and I'm quite little, I think it would tip forward. I don't think it would stay sturdy. Um, so unless Corey has, like, really quickly jumped over the top, but he was quite drunk, I don't think he could have done this. Um, unless there was obviously something he could stand on to sort of, like, boost himself in. To me, it just doesn't quite add up, but I do see where the police are coming from. It's the only theory here. The next thing the police do is start to track his phone. And yep, of course, they see that Corey was using his phone about three in the morning in Bury St Edmunds, as expected. He sent his last text at 3.08 a.m. And then they suddenly see that a couple of hours later at 5 a.m., his phone is 12 miles away. It was 12 miles away in a place called Barton Hills. And this kind of proved to the police that Corey, or his phone at least, had been in a vehicle and had driven this distance because it took 28 minutes by car. To walk it would have taken hours. It would have taken a lot longer than just two hours to walk there. The phone was flashing up at a mast near Barton Mills, very near the landfill site, which again, linked police to the theory that Corey had climbed into one of the bins. His phone was either broken, switched off, or died about 8 a.m. that morning, and it's never shown any more activity. Now, police tracked down the lorry in question that would have picked up the bins that morning, and they had to look at the data of how much the rubbish inside the lorry would have weighed at that time. The data came back showing that there was only 33 pounds worth of rubbish in there. Now, Corey weighed over 200 pounds himself, he wasn't in that lorry. Due to this, the police didn't start searching the landfill site. Now, I have read something as well about a mobile phone back being found, just the plastic, but I don't think they've ever actually been able to say that this phone back was ever Corey's. It was literally just a piece of plastic. They couldn't do anything with it, but that was found. Now, soon a major error in the bin weight was discovered. It came to light that the rubbish in the bin actually weighed over 220 pounds, not just the 33 pounds first thought. Meaning that, yeah, it definitely could have carried Corey's weight. So if Corey had been in that bin and the bin had been put into the back of this lorry, Corey would have been crushed by the compactor on impact. This meant now that the police were months behind in their search for Corey, they should have started searching the landfill site as soon as that was even an option. But they didn't, they waited until this new data came forward. So a massive search of the landfill site began. This wasn't before, though, a massive search of the area around Bury St Edmunds took place. The police and loads and loads of volunteers, including Corey's family, scoured the ground around Bury St Edmunds, right up to where the RAF base was, and they never found anything. They called themselves Corey's Army, and they used the hashtag all across social media, and basically were looking for any evidence whatsoever, but both in the physical search and on social media, nothing was found. So in February 2017, police started the search of the landfill site. They pumped the smell of bubblegum into the landfill to try and mask the smell of decomposition. They had eight police officers that started the search and they were basically just digging through the rubbish. They planned to cover 920 square miles, going down 25 foot. That is so much rubbish, and in the end, I think they covered six and a half thousand tonnes worth of rubbish. They originally expected the search of the landfill site to take just 10 weeks, but in the end, it went from February all the way through to July 21st, which is when the police announced they were giving up the search of the landfill. They hadn't found anything. They did actually find a human skull in the rubbish, but they managed to find out where this had come from and confirmed that it was a pre-1945 skull and it belonged to a female, it definitely wasn't Corey's, and somebody had just sort of thrown it in the rubbish, not thinking anything of it. There were also reports of bones from a nearby incinerator, so landfill sites incinerate some of the rubbish and some of it just goes on the landfill and they had reports of bones in the incinerator so obviously these were tested but they came back as being animal bones. Police were criticised for not continuing the search past July. I think Corey's family were absolutely distraught and they actually took out an injunction and the injunction basically said that the area of the landfill where they had found receipts and papers and rubbish from around the time that Corey had gone missing could not be touched. They wanted to preserve it in the chance that they could still find Corey's body there. But there was no evidence, they never came across anything, not Corey's bones, they never came across any of his clothes, his mobile, 
there was no evidence that Corrie was in the landfill site or even in the bin. It was all just kind of pure speculation. It seemed like the most likely theory at this point and to be honest it's been the only theory the police have ever had. And if Corrie had gone into this lorry the crushing of his body would have led to a faster rate of decomposition and we don't even know if there would be anything left of him. In October 2017, they actually announced a second search of the landfill site, which went on until December 2017. Again, nothing was found. Officially, just a couple of weeks ago, on the 26th of March 2018, the search for Corey was officially stood down. The police kind of said they've hit a complete dead end, there's no realistic line of inquiry that they can look at from here. Corey's family have been very critical of the police, questioning a lot of the choices they've made. They hate the fact that they've stopped the landfill search, um, but the, his family do all believe that he's dead. They think if Corey was alive, then he would have come back to them by now, and he hasn't. So there are three different theories here that are most likely. Number one is that there was an accident and Corey ended up dead. Second is that Corey left voluntarily, and the third is that a third party was involved. The accident theory we've already exhausted that he climbed into the bin, ended up in the lorry and is now in the landfill site. The theory that he left voluntarily as well is also questionable. Corey was very happy with his life, he had a good group of friends, he had a good job, he really enjoyed his job. He had a new puppy which he adored and he wouldn't just left the puppy without telling somebody to take care of it. He had a girlfriend he was happy with. His life was just going really well and he had no reason to just leave without telling anyone. Earlier in the night he disappeared as well. He was also on the phone with his brother making plans to go and visit him soon and he just literally just booked flights to go back to Scotland for Halloween to see his family. The third party theory is what Corey's family believe. They think that somebody else is involved, somebody murdered him, somebody took him. They just think there's somebody that hasn't come forward who has this missing piece of information. They think possibly somebody else picked Corey up from the horseshoe. Um, there were cars around the area, so it is a possibility that Corey got into somebody's car. And I'm assuming that whoever's car Corey got into, he didn't know. And maybe that's how he came to harm. But police have looked at all the CCTV and they have decided that this isn't most likely what happened. On the night that Corey disappeared, between 3 and 5 a.m., 39 different people were captured on CCTV. Over the years, they've managed to identify most of them. There are only 10 people now that remain unidentified from this CCTV footage. So if the police can kind of make all these people come forward, he, they might be able to maybe put together the missing link, but I'm not convinced at this point they'll ever be able to identify them. But it could just be a random attack, but if it was a random attack, then his body would still be there and it isn't. Um, I think it's a possibility that maybe somebody was still in one of these shops and they kind of grabbed Corey and dragged him into one of the shops. But you've got to remember that even though Corey was quite drunk, he was an RAF officer, he was not a weak, timid individual. Um, so he probably would have put up a fight and I think CCTV as well would have showed somebody coming out the front of these shops at this time and nobody was ever shown coming out the front of these shops. I do also get kind of an Eliza Lamb vibe from this. I think there's a possibility that Corey could actually still be in the area, um, like maybe in the horseshoe, like I said earlier, there was a staircase that led up to the roof. Maybe he walked up the staircase and is on that roof. I don't know how thoroughly they checked this area, I assume they checked very thoroughly, but I think he could still be there, maybe wedged somewhere, maybe stuck. I'm not sure. To end this video on a slightly more positive note, about two weeks after Corey went missing, his girlfriend, April Oliver, discovered that she was pregnant with Corey's child. And she actually had the child on June 11th, 2017, and she called her Ellie Louise. But of course, this is also tinged with sadness because this little girl is never gonna know her dad, but I think it did make it easier for Corey's family knowing that his legacy will continue, and now they described their new granddaughter as a ray of light in their lives. So like I said, this has been a very high profile case and I've been putting off doing it because I wanted to make sure I did it justice. I've been hearing about this in the news the past couple of years and it's just, it's a case that blows my mind. But as always, let me know your theories down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. We're now halfway through mystery week and <laughs> it is stressful, but I'm quite enjoying doing it every day. Um, if you did enjoy this, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye guys.